All right, let's begin. God damn it, microphone nearly fell off then. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Praise be the spiral. Praise be the spiral. Sort my windows out. I hope everyone's having a great Thursday. Uh, let's see if we can make it even better by doing some awesome C64 code. Um, oh, God. Right. I still got vodka left, surprisingly, after Tuesday. So I'm going to have a bit of vodka tonight. Uh, it's a long bank holiday weekend, so um, I'm probably going to play on Saturday uh, Resident Evil after the stream. Uh, mm -hmm. Depending on how how much progress we make with um, Showdown, I, I think we should finish on Saturday. Um, but if we finish early, I may start playing Resident Evil a little bit earlier. I'm going to work my way through all of them. Uh, so I'm going to start with number one. I'm going to work our way through um, all of the major versions of the... Uh, um, all, all the major, major versions of Resident Evil. So that's all the numbered versions. Uh, plus, I think there's a couple of extra ones, like Codename Veronica, Resident Evil Zero, although that is a numbered one. So there's a few. I think there's about 11 or 12 different versions. The only one we won't play is the is the final one because we've already played that. Although, but by the time I've completed all them, maybe I'll want to play it again um, on a slightly harder yeah. difficulty, maybe. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, I hope you're all doing well tonight. Um, it's been... It's been a nice couple of days for me. But uh, my room is a lot cooler now. My my door is fixed, so it's no longer just an oven in here, which is nice. Uh, cheers to everybody. Um, I've, which means in turn, um, I've been I've been feeling a little bit better in myself. I've been sleeping better as well. So. It's been a good good couple of days for me. I just hope it carries on. But it probably won't now I've said this. I've probably tempted fate. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be having that with my, my vodka next, so I was probably not going to sleep that well. Um, still waiting on Doxter's uh, Nexus to be returned, but I do have the next month's next Nexus board here. Uh, so I may... Um, because I need to order another one uh, soon anyway, so I may just if it takes if it takes too long, I may just send this one. But I do have to print another another case anyway, so uh, we shall see. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing the results on Saturday. Looking forward to seeing what people have done, what they come up with. Um, I think there's going to be some quite interesting uh, results, judging by by what everybody saw. I think people have been a bit more open about it this time. I think people are people are just saying what they're what their cycle bites are so um it's quite impressive how it vanished in the background <laughs> yeah. Ooh. <laughs> uh, green screen fun because uh, i'm actually using so one thing i discovered with a green screen is if i just have the green screen on alone i have to light the green screen really hard so you would have seen a couple of weeks ago one side this side of my face really really bright um, because I had the I had a bright kind of white light shining onto the uh, onto the green screen to to light it properly so it could do the fade out. Um, if I didn't use a green screen and I just used um, the AI to do the green screen, the Nvidia broadcast. Then you got this sort of stuff happening a lot. A lot. You got lots of bits of fade out happening. Anybody who's used Zoom with background um, blur will know what I mean. You get that kind of halo effect as it can't quite figure out where the edges are. But what I discovered is if you put the green screen up and use the AI, it helps the AI know where the background is, and the the AI can work out exactly the shade of green in in every area. So you can have a gradient uh, green screen, i.e., a badly lit green screen. Uh, and it will work all right, and you can see it's 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 working way better than Zoom uh, would work, but um, or, or Teams or whatever, would, whatever your flavour of chat messaging program is during these times. Uh, thank you for the follow, Dave Doge or Dave Dog uh, Doge. Fucking thinking about cryptos. I missed that. Thank you very much. Um, welcome to the stream. Hope you're all right. Okay, 
let's crack on then. So tonight we're going to do um, Checkanoid. We did pretty well with it last time, I seem to remember. We were fixing some bugs in various places and things were looking pretty decent. So let me just get all my windows in a position where I can actually read the chat. Um, oh, let me turn my desktop stuff down just in case. Uh, there we go. Uh, why is that not loading? Please load, please load. The only problem is now the screen is super bright, so I do, I need to work this out as well, because you can see whenever anything comes on the screen that's bright, it kind of makes me really bright. Um, I think I need to turn the HDR off on the screen. I think that's what it is. Okay, yeah. So we'd fixed the collision. We'd fixed uh, on the on the um, on the mace. We'd fixed the positioning of the mace. The mace was kind of off center. Um, I fixed. I believe I fixed the sprite multiplexing. Um, it still remains to be seen if I have or not so sometimes the laser on this screen would be problematic um but it seems to be fine I'm not having any issues with it at the moment we fixed an issue where certain things would explode when you entered the screen because you thought you were there oh yeah quiz etc hang on um what else do we fix and that was it really i think there was most of the fixes All right let's add points so from now on i'm going to add fifty thousand points to you all because uh, you're all doing, uh, you've all got kind of crazy amounts of, crazy amounts of uh, shillings anyway. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, some new things to the uh, to the to the shimmy shillings um, list as well. Oh God, Amok! <laughs> uh, uh, and then Eldritch did it, and then one. <laughs> <laughs> he took. He stole your win there. Right, start a quiz. There we go. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know what I'll add, but I'll, I'll maybe add something to the shimmish link. So there's, there's more things to spend them on because nobody seems to. Uh, nobody seems to be losing shimmish links. You're just building up. Um. is building up so i don't i don't know what to add i'll I'll think of something i do want to add the uh the the gamble thing so i want to get rid of the raffle um and and replace it with a, a custom raffle where two people win but you do the golden balls thing where uh, one of you cheat or uh, uh, share or steal sort of thing so it will still be a raffle but it'll be more interactive um God damn it! Did you get did you get a PlayStation one? Amazing. Spiral crypto coins, yeah. Kenneth Mirror, thank you very much for the research. Very much appreciated. Oh, thank you for the host as well, Andy Magic Knight and Prize Seven. Um, really, really appreciate. Thank you. Um, okay, let's. Oh, I've done it again with the with the overlay. Why does this keep happening? I don't know why that happens, but it does. Uh, thank you, Gareth, for the bits. <laughs> God, let's start on the vodka already. I've got to take my time. I, I really struggle to get up in the morning, on Wednesday morning. Oh, so I didn't have a hangover though. That was that was impressive. I think that's um, I think that's the benefit of drinking kind of low sugar stuff. I think if you drink lots of sugar, then you 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 get the hangovers. So. Okay, um, so what I want to do first of all is just turn off that border flash for the for the music because it's a bit. Of a, can we turn the music ever so slightly down as well? It's just a little bit too loud. There we go. <laughs> Amok is just spending everything. Amok and Steps have switched bodies. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so game loop. Actually, I cannot remember where the music is called, actually. I would assume it's in here, but it is not. Um, so maybe it's in the IRQ. Ah, yes, it is in the IRQ. The reason it's in the IRQ is because it has to do some special stuff when it um, when you switch screens to keep the music going. So actually, I'll, I'll quickly I'll quickly explain what happens there. So um, obviously, when you change screens, what happens is um, the font is reloaded. So we've already gone over this, and the font is loaded from cartridge, um, and it's it's loaded from cartridge and a new font is built based on the previous screen. Uh, well, those, those characters get left, but um, based on the next screen, it gets added to the font. Uh, so the font is constantly dynamically being generated. Also, the maps themselves, each screen uh, level data for each screen, not the, uh, not the code, but the actual tile data is also loaded from the cartridge. Now, the problem with that is when you load from cartridge what happens is it banks in the kernel so when you bank in the cartridge it also banks in the kernel which means your your non-kernel interrupts will now be kernel interrupts so you have to change the way that your interrupts work so what happens is is um, i set two interrupts up so i set my normal interrupt up here my multiplexer interrupt but then i set a kernel interrupt so then what happens is if you go if you start to move on to a new screen, it switches the kernel on, which will then change it to this interrupt instead. And that fires uh, this one here, uh, which just calls the music uh, and then and then exits using the, the normal kernel kind of routines for exit. Um, and the other thing that it does, is, oh, actually music only is not being called at all. Oh. On the NMI, why is the NMI? I think there's a. I had to do with the NMI as well, and I can't remember why that is. Oh, because there is also a state where this isn't being called, so you need to call it from this NMI interrupt instead. Um, so there's a few tricky things I'm doing to make sure that the music continues to play all the time. Um, and that includes kind of uh, turning certain bits of the ROM on and off and stuff. and and, and banking things back in for the cartridge. So during the cartridge copy, so the, the reason this is there's three stages for, for the game. There's normal normal gameplay, which is this one, the multiplexer. There's the kernel is banked in because uh, we're, we, we have the cartridge banked in, so we're copying from the cartridge. Uh, but there's also a state during, during that cartridge banking stage where it will keep flicking uh, the banking on and off so that it can copy data from the cartridge to the same area underneath the same area of RAM underneath the cartridge ROM. So if you're copying from 8,000, um, copying to 8,000, sorry, that's actually where the cartridge ROM is. So you have to turn the cartridge off in order to load stuff in that location. And that's what this one does. So whenever the, um, whenever the kernel interrupt is turned off, but also this interrupt is not working, then it uses an NMI interrupt to ensure so the music still fires. So there's a lot of lot of little tricky things. It took quite a while to get that to work properly, um, but it, it kind of picks the right interrupt based on which which mode it's in. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So I've turned the border off here. Uh, uh, what's this? I don't know what this is about. Oh, this is just this is just a border. Okay, this is just to turn the borders different colours when the multiplex is on. But that's fine. Uh, I can comment that out now. It's not needed at all. I think the multiplex is working fine now. Okay, cool. So let's have a look at what we're going to do. So we need to figure out exactly what we're going to do next in the game uh, and have a go at that. I want to do it on a, on a screen by screen basis. So let's just take a look at things as we go. And why has that not worked? Sort of command maps. Oh, because I'm I should be pressing it there. That's why. Gremlins. Yeah. yeah. So I think I added one more series. I think Steps sent me a series. Um, I don't think I've added any more. I think I added one more, and I don't know how many we're on now. Actually, let's have a look.
we've got 11 different themes i think you've had i think you've had most of them already um yeah i think you've had i think you've had most of them there's only two that you haven't and they're the ones that um yeah they're the ones that steps has provided so maybe they'll appear at some point I need to add some more. So if anybody, again, I'd like to say, if anybody has got any backgrounds they want to add, um, give me a group of backgrounds that all fit a certain theme and we will, I, sh I shall add them in. But yeah, if you, if you, if you send a background, you're not allowed to tra trigger them. So two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Oh, really? Okay. Maybe, maybe there's some older series that, uh, yeah, I think two, three, four. Oh, have you not done that one? Wow. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> I love this background. It's David Hasselhoff drunk. He's not got his cheeseburger with him, but it is. It is him eating a cheeseburger. Yeah, nine. Okay, yeah, okay. I think you've got most of them. I think the one, there's one you, I did think you had, but um, uh, interesting. Never mind. Never mind. Um, I need to add more in anyway. I think series zero and series one or series one. I don't know if it, I can't remember how it numbers them. Um, but I think the first two series you've already done, but you probably didn't know they were series at the time, but they are still series. So um, I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to say what they are just in case you haven't. I don't I, I need to add an admin panel so I can see how many you've got of each series. So. Uh, OK. All right, let's uh, let's crack on with this then. Well, it's still throwing an error somewhere. Maps defined uh, car ASM. Okay, what have I done in here? Oh, okay, I uncommented that. I've also managed to make a very tiny mark on my screen, which has um, caused well, not a dead pixel, but like a, just a mark in the coating. So I've got a tiny white dot on my screen. It's, I can only really see it when it's when there's something black or or, or dark in that position. But um, very frustrating. I don't know. I, I think I hit it with a USB lead when I was going behind my monitor for something, and it's just chipped a tiny, tiny piece of the screen off uh, enough for it to show a little white dot, which is a pain in the ass. All right, so this screen is pretty good. The only thing this screen doesn't have is the um, is the startup. So there is like a, a, an instructions on how to play on this screen, uh, which I haven't implemented yet. Um, oh, hang on. Wait a minute, I got a LastPass security attempt, and I don't use LastPass anymore. Uh, Okay. Okay, I need to check that out soon, so um Yeah, I'm not sure what that's about. Hmm. Interesting. Uh okay. Okay, so the speedway. So I'm not I'm not gonna worry too much about that screen right now. I think we need to get the doors working. So let's start on this screen. Uh obviously we've got some collision issues, but this is just due to um due to uh the the, the lack of kind of 
well, not lack of, but this needs changing, needs trimming by one row of pixels. Um, but we can we can add um, the next step in here, which is to make this a shootable um, switch, uh, which opens this door here. So we need to put the door back in on this screen. Uh, so this is screen 11, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I need to, uh, hang on, I need to take a few minutes, all right, I'll be, I'll be right back, two minutes. Okay, I'm back, sorry about that. Um, that was weird, that was weird, I, I couldn't sit and just not do anything about that um, password thing, so, because uh, I got two alerts in quick succession, uh, let me stop the break, um, and I, it, it worried me a little bit, but on the investigation it turns out it was coming from my ip so it looks like i've got um one version of my browser on my laptop still has um still has the uh it still has the plugin installed uh and that's it auto logs in so that's that's why so thank god because uh that would have been worrying because that was that was a master password breach so that would have been every single password uh so <sighs> So, so I'm glad. Anyway, uh, where are we at now? Okay. Um, all right. We're gonna we're gonna re-enable the door. That's right. So let's take a look. Asset export persist. Okay. No, we don't need the asset export. What we need is the maps for screens eleven. So let's find screen eleven this one here uh and we we have code to add a door in so it looks like it's just this um, uh, do i put maybe i should put a constant in there for that actually let's uh yeah let's do that so let's do doors as well it's, it's a constant but it's going to be called a label up here uh uh, because otherwise I can't see it in another file, so uh sorry, no. Horizontal vertical. And then in here I can just do I got the wrong keyboard settings on. No, okay. Okay, cool. So that should, in theory, give us a door in the right place now. Wow. I need to uh, contact LastPass, actually, and see, because I want my, I would like my uh, database to be completely removed from LastPass, because I don't use LastPass at all anymore. Um, so I don't see why they should have my vault on there. So I'm, I'm hoping there's a buttons where which will which will remove them but if not then um i'll have to contact and get them to do that okay the door's there i think at the moment the door opens as soon as i shoot so i need to turn that functionality off as soon as i press fire uh, and we need to replace it with shooting this thing here so shooting this will turn the door on, on uh open i think it stops this flashing i need to check um but i think it stops that flashing so we'll we'll we need to create the the idea of a, a switch on a screen now as well, um, but that's a, that's a pretty simple task to do. Okay, so let's go and have a look at the doors first. So the doors are opening when I press fire. So there must be somewhere in here. Uh, DC zero zero no. Okay, maybe not. What's opening the door then? Something is triggering the door to open. Maybe it's in the update in here. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so this is what's triggering the door to open here. Uh, and it's just on this screen. So what is it doing? It's actually, it checks that the door state is not already open and then it opens it. Okay. 
Okay, okay. So let's let's create a switch class, and we're going to link the switch to an object. Um, or link the switch to. Hmm, actually, how should we do this? I think what we'll do is we'll we'll create a switch class that when you shoot it, it triggers a function. Uh, so let's uh, let's create a new new class, a new file. Call it switches. Uh, where's doors? Doors is in here. So let's just keep it in here in the rest of the game files. New file. Uh, call it switches. Oh my god. I swear my, my fingers are getting fatter as I get older. I mean, I'm getting fatter as I get older, so it surprised me. Okay, and we need to kind of take a, a leaf out of the doors here and, and kind of use a similar uh, similar thing here. Um, so we shall have a data object. Let's just cop. Well, actually, I tell you what, I'm going to do. I'm just going to. Oh no, I'm not, because there's quite a lot of, quite a lot of junk in here. Okay, so we we set a next uh, value, so we know when we add a switch which one it needs to be. We'll reset this whenever we come into this. Uh, whenever we come into a new screen, we'll reset this by calling a clear. Um, and the switch, I don't know the data about the switch at the moment, so let's worry about that. I need to go and have a look at that switch and see what it does. And I cannot for the life of me remember any of the switches um, throughout the game other than that one. So I, I cannot for the life of me remember how that's going to work So um, and whether there's more than one. So let me have a look. I think I've got... Yeah, okay, so I've got a playthrough here from Andy. So let me get to where he plays through. Okay, here we go. So there's going to be a lot of chatting in the background on this, but we should be able to see what's going on here so wait is this this looks like me playing it yeah this is me I oh, know it's him playing it and me me recording it through this okay okay that's fine I'm recording his screen basically um so let's have a look what happens when he flicks that switch So it'd be good to to mess around with the stars in this this bit as well. Make these a little bit better. Um, let's not press the switch. All right, there we go. So when the switch is pressed, it stops flashing. Okay, so I think the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to create. A rectangle area which is considered the switch when a bullet hits that rectangle it triggers a function in the in the screen class um, which can then be responsible for setting flags and stuff on a screen by screen basis that that makes it uh, individual to the screen and doesn't mean we it doesn't tie us into any crazy behavior as well so okay um so in that case, what do we need? We need uh, X pos and a Y pos and a width and a height. Oh, God, say it cannot type at all tonight.
Und <lacht> Andy, Andy, Andy. Okay. Okay, so that's all we need here. Um, so the switches are actually going to be quite dumb. All the switches are going to do, they're just going to be areas that when a bullet passes through them, um, they trigger a, a, a routine. What I'm going to leave down to the screen code is whether or not the switches can be triggered more than once or not. I can't remember if they can. Um, we can always move stuff into the into the switch code anyway. Um, actually, actually, let's 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 do that because I don't want to. Do, I don't want to have too much stuff in here. So let's have um. Uh, No, not toggle, but uh, one shot. So one shot, a one shot switch. You'll only be able to shoot once, uh, and then it will switch, and it will never, never switch. Oh no, because it still needs to be stored. Uh, it doesn't matter because it still needs to be stored in the persistent data. So it makes sense like this. I think. Yeah, that's fine. All right, cool. Um, what we can do is just not add a switch once it's been opened. So if you come into a screen and the switch has already been triggered, then you can just not bother adding it if it becomes a performance concern. Um, but that's going to add a few bytes. Uh, this should be all right, I think. This should be all right. Okay, so clear basically just needs to do this, which is just get the, uh, the next switch and set to zero. Uh, same as we're doing with the next door. That's exactly the same here. And then when we add, we need to do this through macros again. So I'm going to open my screen here. And we're going to use character locations, same as we do with the doors, uh, to define uh, switches. So a switch is just going to have a width and a height of two in this case, because it's the, the sphere that's in that position. Uh, and, a, and wherever that position is. So let's uh, not sprite pad, let's open up. Jesus. <laughs> the void, he put the void on. <laughs> uh, there we go. Get the right one in a minute. Uh, is it this one? I can't remember which one Andy has messed with. Uh, it looks like it's this one, actually. Yeah, this has got all the screens in it, hasn't it? Let's turn on. Yeah, okay, so he, he has done the work for all of these, cool. Uh, all right, so our thing is over here. So we want anywhere in this block of four characters here. So that's going to be uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 from the top. And five from this edge ish. Uh, hang on, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35 X. And this starts at one, not zero. One, two, three, four. So 35, four. Okay. So that's going to be our switch position. So then in our macros, we need to add a macro to do this. So we're just going to go and take a look at the add door because uh, we can use similar code here. Jeez. 
Okay, so width and height are going to be tricky because width and height, uh, we'll, we'll pass X and Y as X pos and Y pos. But what we'll do with width and height is we're going to load accumulator with the width. And then I'm going to shift that. And or it with the height. And that's just going to use both. Um, when do I tend to use macros as opposed to routines? Um, so with something like this, when I'm doing something a lot, um, I, I'm i using macros here because the end result of the macro. Thank you very much for the follow, our AR Collector, the real. Uh, appreciated. Cheers. Um, what, I'm, what these macros tend to do, in most cases anyway, is they are um, they are calling a function at the end. So they're calling a method at the end or routine or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but they have some setup first. So it's just an easy way of ro rolling all of these um, all of these values into the correct registers and not having to repeat it every time I do it. So. Uh, that's where I'll use macros. So for things like, you know, adding a passable area, I've got four parameters that I need to pass into a function. So I just use a macro to deal with sorting those parameters out. So in this case, I'm adding a switch. I need to pass four parameters in. The easiest way to pass these parameters to this function is to, um, well, actually, it's probably not the easiest way, but it's how I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, so I'm combining the width because these this happens on an initialization. So speed isn't a major concern. Uh, I'm combining the width and the height into one uh, into the accumulator, storing the x and y, and then calling this function. Uh, and that's going to minimize the amount of setup I need to do here, um, and just call this function instead. I could actually combine these a different way. I could store these in some variables that are part of this. Uh, so part of this function instead. In fact, let's do that because that will save a few bytes. So if I if I put vars in here, um, so if I put width in here at the end and height as well, then what I can do in this macro is I can say uh, load width, store that at. Actually, is that going to save me any bytes? I don't think that is. One, two, three, four, five six seven eight so it's eight bytes there so there'll be two five no it's not it's not going to save me any at all i pass parameter then by 16 when you can when you can pass it already times 16. oh yeah i can just do that kind of thank you thank you i'm going to give you some points for that and that's a good one yeah Well, well, well thought out. I should have realized that myself. So, um, yeah, it, because I'm passing a macro, I don't. I can actually do whatever I want with it with that value here. So, so this is perfect. This is this is yeah. It's about as small as I need to get it. So, uh, but likewise, I could probably do the same here as well. Oh no, because uh, I thought because uh, I'm I am actually using the accumulator here. But when you pass in a parameter in and a macro, you can do what you want with it. So um, uh, also macros should be very short. Yes, exactly. Because the thing with macros is they're going to be repeating code, right? So the shorter you can make the macros the better. As I say, I tend to use macros just for um just for passing parameters to methods instead. What I might do is I might write a big um, a big macro first, and then when I'm done writing it, I will try and split it into a smaller function, which you've probably seen me do on, on a few occasions now. There's nothing wrong with using macros to simplify your code, but try try before you um, before you kind of commit to uh, that being final, mm -hmm. try to go into your macros and split them into a tiny, tiny stub macro and a function which is called with the, the parameters and then the code is or not all of the code is repeating. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's what we're going to do with the add switch. We're just going to call this function from this macro. Uh, this macro is then going to call this, which I no longer needs this. Uh, and then this is going to add the switch. So let's take a look at the way that's added in the doors. Okay, so uh, 
Okay, so we, we've got some data that's being passed here. So I'm going to do the same again. So whenever you see restx in my code, that usually means it's going to be um, a self mod code, and this is a restore. So um, and the reason we're doing that is because we need to use x here for this. So um, Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to take the uh, lower byte and put it into uh, the lower nibble, sorry, and put it into height. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the accumulator onto the stack, and then I'm going to uh, then I'm going to end it with ref and store that at data dot height comma x. And then I'm going to pull it off. Here I do need to do the, the shifting. I can't really get around this, uh, but it's it's fine. As I say, this is only going to happen at the beginning of a screen. It's not going to happen constantly. So so pushing and pulling and, and storing like this is absolutely fine. Uh, so shifting like that is absolutely fine. Okay, so that is the accumulator dealt with. Um, so now let's load accumulator with the value which we stored up here this value here uh, again i use always use b for self mod uh, even though this is immediate mode it will only ever actually use these this uh this byte here it will ignore this top one but i put b so it's obvious when i look at it right need to make a vodka so second i'm gonna do a tiny one because i've got a little bit of oh actually no i've got no all right never mind if I have more lime left, I don't. So I might have a little bit of lime in it, a bit of lime and coke. Yeah. Vodka, coke, and lime soda. Should be an interesting flavor. I got a new bottle ordered for the weekend as well. Okay, so now we've got the x value, which is the x pulse. So now we need to store that at data dot x pulse comma x, and then we just need to transfer y and store that at data y pulse. So again, same as it is over here, uh, and that's it for add. That's really all it needs to do. It doesn't need to do any any of this copy door charts or anything. It doesn't need to do any of that. Um, the only thing we're going to need now is is a uh, an update uh, function, and what the update is going to do, this is going to go through all the switches, um, and it's going to compare the bullets. Well, actually, it'll go through yeah, go through all the switches, comparing the player bullets positions to the switches. So we need to bring up the player bullets, uh, which is in Articles, I believe. Bullets, there we go. So we've got a list of bullets here and we've got a list of switches here. So what we'll do is we'll go through each switch, comparing every bullet to it. So it should be it should be relatively easy to do, I think. So oh, God damn it, hang on. Okay. Uh Wow. That went down the wrong goal. Ooh. Okay, so we're gonna go through each of the bullets. So let's uh let's just write a little bit of pseudocode for, for now. Well not pseudocode, but uh do we go through the bullets or do we go through the switches? I think probably doesn't really matter actually this, the loop number is going to be the same so we'll do we'll do switches because that's that's easy so we'll use what the y value uh for doing that uh, and we'll call this switch loop and then at the very end we're going to increase y and we're going to compare that to actually we can do that uh let's show we'll do it Actually, if there's no switches, then this wouldn't be called at all because it would be called from the main screen. So, so we do it here. Okay, compare y. 
data.next switch. Oh, that's the other thing we need to do as well here. We need to increment data.next switch. We need to make sure that once we've added a switch, the next one gets added into the next area of memory. Um, okay, cool. Banana man. Haha. <laughs> See, these are all great themes. These are all really good themes. You know, 80s, 80s uh, kids cartoons, something like that would be great. So please feel free to uh, to come up with, with fun, um, uh, you know, fun, fun background themes uh, to use. Don't let Steps do more, or else Steps will be really bored waiting for you all to pick his, <laughs> pick his backgrounds. Uh, see this I should have done a series with this one as well, famous sitcom sets. Um But I forgot, so yeah. The thing is is I the the series thing is a, a recent one, so um if you have like twenty backgrounds you can't trigger, yeah. <laughs> well you can trigger them, but it would kind of defeat the object, right? It would kind of be a pointless exercise. Um, it's better if they're discovered. I think. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to go mad if you suddenly type them all in. You know, but you lose the fun of of the of challenging everybody to discover um, discover what they are and and work out your your theme because it's a it's a nice little thing anyway, isn't it? To uh, to challenge everybody with that. So. Okay, so uh, if it's not equal, we go to switch loop. So this is going to go through uh, each of the switches one at a time. Okay, so what do we need to do? Okay, so what we need to do is, um, oh, actually, thinking about it, there is one thing we haven't done here, which is uh, callback. Uh, oh, no. So the callback is going to be the function that gets called when uh, callback high. Uh, this is going to be the function that gets called when uh, this this switch is hit. So we need to make sure that's added in here as well, which at the moment it's not. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put this in here. I'm going to put callback here like that. Uh, and I'm going to put a word in here like that. Uh, and then in our macros, we call back here. Oh, God, I cannot type tonight. I don't think I did it lowercase, but I will go and change it if that's if that is so. I believe that's right. Okay, so it is getting a little bit bigger, but you can see if I had to type this every time I wanted to add a switch, instead of just you know repeating the same block of code using a macro, it would just get kind of a little bit tedious. So I did use lowercase. Okay, that's good. So now I grab callback. Zero and I store that at data dot call back my x uh low high cool so now the uh now the uh the system has a, a callback as well which means when a switch is hit we know what to do and that will be based in the screen code basically What what are we talking about here? So is the theme correct? Yes. So just to explain, I think Andy's explained there. So so the reason I do this is to remind me that it's uh, remind me that it's a, a, 
a self-modified piece of code. This label kind of gives it away as well because I put a label right next to this value. So what I'm doing is I'm storing the X register and then restoring it back again here. Um, with This saves me having to push it onto the stack or anything. Um, actually, don't you need to load X, best X? No, I do it with load accumulator, it's fine. Um, so the reason I use beef is to remind me that it's self-modifying code, but because it's immediate mode, what the assembler will do is it will actually ignore the BE like that. And it will just use EF. It will just use the, the eight, eight bits that it can use for that mode. Um, so it's perfectly fine to, you know, I could, I could do, I could do that and it's absolutely fine. It will just still use this value and it will still be immediate mode. This, de this defines that it's going to be immediate mode. It doesn't matter what size number you put after it. It will be immediate mode. Um, wow. So, you know, you can make it super long as well. If you want it to really stand out, you could you could make it make it longer. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So that's that's why I use beef anyway. So, uh, so it really doesn't matter what you put in there. The immediate mode will just take the the lowest eight eight bits of that. Um, Could you not have vegan soy isn't hex? <laughs> okay, cool. So update is now going to go through the bullets list. So that means we need to go into bullets in here, uh, and bullets has a similar setup as well. We're using the same kind of setup everywhere. Um, the only difference here is that um, bullets can be removed at different times. So um, we unlike the unlike the switch loop where we just go through it until we hit the the next switch. In other words, the the maximum number of switches. What we need to do with with bullets is we need to go through every single one and just skip the ones that aren't there. So actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the bullet loop out of here, and I'm going to put it in here. So this is actually looping through uh, the bullets now. So let's just indent this to match. Let's call this bullet loop. So now what this is doing, this is, oh, so let's change that as well. Actually. Oh, unless it's screen, so this is gonna change anyway. So now what this is doing, this is going through uh, all the bullets, uh, and if the bullet MSB is uh, zero, uh, so in other words, if its position on the screen is at zero, zero uh, in memory, sorry, zero, zero something, it's address, screen address, uh, then it knows that it's not active and it jumps to skip. So it just skips over it. So that's all we need to do. Now that's cycling through every single uh, thing. So let's put some little comments in here. So cycling through all switches. Check versus all bullets. Okay, so all we need to do now is we need to check that is a screen is a bullet position on screen within our rectangle that we're we're checking. So we actually have X and Y here uh, already for the bullets. I believe those are screen X and Y. I don't see yeah screen X screen Y. Okay, so that's good. So we can just check that those values are within a certain range. So the easiest way to do this is we take, so let's let's look at this uh, mathematically, right? So if you take a value, uh, so what is our what is our range value here? So um, our switch is at 35 comma four, and it's two by two wide, okay? So this is our coordinate and size. So that means for our bullet to be within the box that we've defined there, the X would need to be 35 or 36, and the Y would need to be four or five. So the easiest way to mathematically do that is to take our bullet position. So we take our bullet X and we subtract our, um, uh, sorry, uh, our uh, switch X position. And then if that value is less than the width, then we're, then we're in the we're in the same x position. So we need to do the same thing with bullet y. 
minus switch and if that is less than height so if both of these both of these things are true then we've hit the switch so that's pretty easy to do so what we need to do is uh we 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 do exactly that we 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 do these things one at a time so um let's put this into a comment here so we can say Uh, yeah, like that. Just so it's easy for us to see what's going on. Okay, so let's start with bullet X. So we take. Um, okay, this needs to change ever so slightly. So this would be. bullets.data so so data on its own is just switches but we're looking at bullets.data here instead so uh so we're going to take now it's always good to when you're doing this kind of check it's always good to check x before you check y the reason being is because if you think about uh, the the screen size there are more x positions that a bullet can be in then there are y positions that means if you've got a square that's uh, that's two by two so if you've got a square that's equal equal width and height there are almost double the chance of it being in the square vertically than there are horizontally so if you do the horizontal check first then you have more chance of dropping out of this function and not running um not running excess code so it'll be more efficient if you do the x position first uh, so we want bullets.data.x uh, and we're going to subtract uh, data.xpos, which is our switch xpos, and we're going to compare that to um, to the width, uh, which is data.width. And if it's more, we go to skip. So. Let's put this up here. There we go. And so to do the same on the Y register is very simple. Uh, thank you for the follow, DefCon two o one live. Um, thank you for thank you for the follow. Welcome and thank you for the host as well. Cheers. Vodka and coke and a bit of lime. Uh, it's not good that I'm getting into the vodka, is it? It's I'm becoming an old old alcohol old man alcoholic now. A bit worrying. Okay, so at this point we've hit the switch. So if we've hit the switch at this point, now we need to jump to our new function. So we need to load data.callback low. Store that at uh uh, uh let's call it a uh, hit routine or zero there we go and then we're going to jump to this subroutine which is going to have this hit routine and again i'm going to use beef here so we know that that's related to self mod code so we're calling that function now the thing is if we've hit this switch we don't need to do any more checks against this switch on this on this frame so at this point we will jump to skip switch here now the only other thing we need to be aware of is that we need to make sure that the y register is not destroyed uh, in this routine here this routine could pretty much do anything it wants so we need to make sure that the the y routine is not um, destroying that we also need to add the uh the comma x is in here so comma x here comma x here comma y here y y okay so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to store y in rest y load y there we go another self mod here um and then at this point we're just going to jump to skip switch because there's no point in checking uh 
the rest of this the rest of the bullets against this switch we can just jump to to the next switch and that's it that should be enough so let's uh let's move over to the main code now uh let's include that uh file so that's going to be in loader uh I don't really have anywhere where I want to put this in particular. I'm going to put it in. Where's the doors actually? Doors, doors, doors. Shit, where are the doors? Oh, game code low. Ah, okay. Okay, it's fine. Uh, 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 uh. Skip switch. <laughs> I used to live near Ipswich a long time ago. Uh, in a town called Lowestoft. Well, I say near. It was uh, in the same county, I believe. It's in Suffolk. Which I guess is near enough. Okay, so that is our switches. So now all we need to do is trigger them. Um, uh, we need to set up the trigger in, inside here. So the moment when we call this, we're not giving it a callback. So um, hit switch, let's call it. Let's put hit switch in here. Okay, and then the other thing we need to do is when I, so what I'm trying to do with the updates is anytime you're in a in a room that has things in it that need updating, the updates are called automatically by well not called automatically you have to manually call them in the screen update. Uh, now what we could do is we could have a system that um, whenever you add a door it, it sets a flag and says okay this screen needs to call a door update or a switches update. That's something I might change uh, later on, but for now, it's only an extra three bytes every time we want to add an update, and it allows us to kind of juggle things around if we want to. We can control the order of these things on a screen by screen basis. We can even do things like um, uh, is switch active. You know, we can we can change. We we can make things only happen on certain screens. So, uh, don't you need a comma X when working with the current switch? uh on which bit in in here uh it should all of these functions i ah, definitely need one here uh and need one here so i missed that one um i don't know if that's what you meant uh because i have done that ev everywhere else but either way i'm going to give you some points anyway because uh, you you sent me back to look at that, so so it's worth five points at least. Already done it. Already one step ahead of you, Andy. <laughs> How is people's lag tonight? By the way, I haven't done anything again. I'm just I'm intrigued to know what the hell is going on with my stream. I have a funny feeling it's to do with the uh, the sixty frames a second stuff, which is annoying because I I kind of want to stream at. Uh, 4k but uh, i'm scared that that will absolutely destroy the uh the twitch in fact i don't think you can stream at 4k john was the same last night oh uh, okay so it's it's a uk london lag maybe or something oh well no because john's not london is he so yeah i wish i knew what it was i wish i knew what it was maybe you could go back to 30 no no Let's see you went at coast. Okay, so went at coast. What do you mean when at coast? Um, the the reason the reason I do sixty is because I do record them for. Oh, okay, I do record them for YouTube. So I I want I want the best kind of qualities for for YouTube. So, um. It means it's holiday, but you didn't have to listen to tell me that. 
Also, give me more than a second to read it. Come on. <laughs> uh, maybe a streaming carried somewhere that where we lie later. So I'll have another look at some point off off stream, but um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure why. I listened to test my latency. Ah, okay. Fair enough. I'll let you off. Uh, uh, good night, Quadrisaur. Thanks for joining. And cheers. I see. I'm just finding any odd excuse to drink now. Someone joins. Cheers. Someone leaves. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Every time Andy does a listen, no, I can't do that. I'll be drunk. Drunk in minutes. Yeah, it is kind of all over the show. I I do get that impression with the way people play the games and stuff in the the backgrounds. Um, it's it seems to be all over the show. I have no idea, no idea what causes it. It's weird because my network is is fine. You know, um, I mean, sure, I'm sure my data is being rerouted through China all the time, but um, it should be should be all right. Every time someone, no, no, God, yeah. Every time someone gambled, every time someone gambles, every time a raffle is started in the break, um, yeah, there's certain things that would just be too, too much. The drinking game, the drinking game, watching, watching me could get very dangerous. Okay, so we're going to have this hit switch function. So this is going to get called when the switch is hit, uh, and then this gets updated. So let's just start by incrementing the border let's let's see what happens uh so i would assume that now i should be able to shoot the switch and, and increment the border oh what happened then something weird went on oh okay so i've i've messed something up oh i pressed f so one of the things i've noticed in sublime is if you press f9 it does weird things to your file so okay so there is a problem though uh, the problem is invalid addressing mode. Oh, I've got an immediate mode on here. Okay, cool. There we go. Anyway, Andy, I want you to sort it out. You're you're the network master. You should you should just be able to wave a magic wand and make my lag negative. Sort it out, please. Thanks. Okay, cool. Okay, so we've hit a CPU jam, which will be down to um well it'll be down to this almost definitely uh but why it's down to that i don't know uh it could be that maybe it's jumping on to next switch here and not not skipping them for some reason um let's take a look actually oops that's the background that's the backgrounds that don't exist exist bg steps is dreaming of shimmer shillings <laughs> it's twitch not the network <laughs> are they all finger pointing from the network team to the server team yeah you get that a lot we were talking about uh kubernetes setup today and it's saying i just need to get a, a, a very simple kubernetes cluster but i know i knew nothing about it so i had to kind of learn how to set them up and stuff and it, it took quite a while to do uh someone said well why didn't you just ask the the uh platform team to to do it for you and i realized that if i'd have asked them it would have taken three times longer and i would have got a much more complex unnecessary installation i would have got loads of stuff i didn't need um you know, lots of services I didn't need, lots of weird kind of configuration files and kind of RBAC setups and stuff. It just it would have been really odd, uh, and it would have been um, it would have taken three times longer because it would have had to go through a load of kind of a load of a load of planning steps and stuff. So it's just like no, that's that's why it's easier just to learn it myself. Uh, check the bloody server before blaming the network. Uh, 
SSTA192. Thank you for the follow. I very much appreciate it. All right. Uh, so we've got a CPU jam when I hit the switch. It's almost certainly going to be down to this routine here, uh, which means that this loop is probably running twice for some reason. So let me just check that I'm putting the right things in the right places. Call back low and call back high. Call back low, call back high, hit routine. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint in here. Uh, actually, no, no, I'm not. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to look in here um, at the call stack. So uh, let's have a look at 0100. Oh, sorry, 0180. Right, there's our stack. Uh, our stack pointer is at F9. So it's kind of here. Um, Actually, what's, no, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to, I'm going to remove this for a second. So it's only going to do one, one loop. I'm going to see if it crashes. If it doesn't crash, then I'm going to put it back. And if it crashes, I know that the problem is that it's, it's skipping too many, it's doing too many switch setups, basically. Oh, I don't think we're ever clearing, are we? So that's that is one problem as well. Not that we'd need to clear at the moment, but uh, oh, okay, that door's still open. I'm not that. Okay, so we're still getting a jam here, so that would imply that this this jump is is wrong for some reason. So um, so it's not to do with that. It's to do with this jump to subroutine here for some reason being. Incredible. I was going to go in like it. Yeah, I'd avoided it for so long, to be honest. Um, but I'm starting to kind of, I've been doing a lot more self mod recently. So I've been using more and more of it. I still, do, I still put the beef in here because I still want it to be really obvious. Um, but I, I, and I try to use kind of like, if I'm just using it to restore a value, then I use rest A, rest X, rest Y. Um, so there's some consistency. Uh, I do think it's a little tricky to read, but I am getting used to it now. So, um, it does make for slightly neater code, I guess. I got, I've gone through that drink really quickly. Okay. Why is that wrong? Why is that wrong? So let's have a think about this. So we come into this routine, uh, and we run through the first time it hits and goes into hit routine. So this is our hit routine. Just increments the border and ex ex exits. Um, then the next time we hit, it does exactly the same thing again. Uh, we've hit that switch. It should just jump straight into here again. Nothing has changed in here. Um, oh, I see. Let's see the problem. Should be Y, not X. always check your indices to make sure you're using the the correct uh, register especially if you're doing a nested loop like this uh, it's very easy to to accidentally use the wrong ones so we're still missing two enterprise captains ah interested oh interestingly it doesn't tell you if you if you do one that you've already so Spock is one, right? Spock is a, is one of the captains, um, but it's not showing that he's part of a series. So um, maybe I'll maybe I'll add in the top corner up there just the kind of series number or something if there is a series number related to it, just so that we can um, you can see that it is part of a series. Like series number and how many you've discovered already. So, so in this case, it would be I can't remember how many was in this series, but um, let's say there were twelve in the series and you've got two to discover. So it would say at the top there, ten of twelve, uh, number five or whatever it was, seven of nine. <laughs> oh, bravo, bravo. Most most topical joke of the month win. That's that's brilliant. I like that. Well done.
yeah there we go cool so now the switch is it's working we can shoot as much as we want uh, so the only thing that's happening now is that the switch, the, the bullet is not disappearing. So we need to remove the bullet when it hits something. Now, that is probably a little trickier than we would like it to be because it's not in, it, it probably wouldn't get cleared in that case. Um, so what can we do to make that disappear? I need to have a think about how that works. Strobel check, uh, bullet clear. So the moment they're done in the updates, I think, in here. Um, oh, so one way I could do it is I could change the X register of the bullet to be way off the screen somewhere. You see here, it compares if it's 28. So what if, if I do this, if I do... Um, oh, actually, it does the clear. What does the clear do? It takes the screen position and clears it. Yeah, so if I just change the X position, but not the screen position, it should remove it. So let's try that. Let's let's see if that works. So uh, before we go into that routine, I will do it. Uh, I shall do it here. So we're going to load the value with. Uh, we'll do FF because it's minus one. It's kind of off the screen that way. Um, actually, let's let's do let's do like F eight, so it's like way off screen in case it, it tries to move it first. And we're going to store that at uh, bullets dot data dot x comma x. So in fact, that should be done before that routine. I'll do it up up here. Okay, so let's give that a quick try, and then once that's working, we can turn on the uh, turn on the actual door switch for this, and then that gives us another uh, set of functionality that we can start using throughout the game, which is pretty nice. It's pretty nice. We've got quite a lot now. We've got doors, we've got switches, we've got uh, particles, obviously, decals. Uh, we've got the laser, which is probably going to need a bit of work to make it work on other things. Uh, we've got all the mines as well, so really, really working our way through all these objects. I mean, uh, I do want to know what room I'm using as well. So where was it? So we had some low code or something. Okay, yeah. So yeah, not bad at all. Still, still a bit of room down here. How much room have we got up here? Uh, okay, so we we are kind of slowly running out of room in this area. Um, but there is other places as well I can put code, so I'm not too worried at the moment. And the, the, honestly, the majority of the code is is kind of done now. It's really not a lot of uh, global code to go. It's all it's all kind of shared. Uh, all the all the code is shared now, so it's only it's only screen specific stuff, which I have got loads of room for. So. Yeah, so you see the, the decal is no longer happening, which means the bullet is being absorbed. Uh, there's nothing odd happening with the bullet. It's not kind of appearing anywhere else randomly on the screen. It's it's disappearing properly as it goes into that. So cool, that's working. Excellent. So let's move on to the, the screen itself. So in this screen, we did have a piece of code which was opening and closing the door, um, which was this piece here. Um, so what happens is when the door, uh, when the game starts, the door state is at zero. Uh, what we need to do is make sure that when the switch is hit, um, let's have a look, door animation position. Not sure what this is, screen RAM plus 20. So, oh, this is a door state thing. Okay, so we don't need that. Um, but this is the actual door switch code. So let's take that out of there. And let's go and put this in here instead. So now when we hit the switch, this piece of code runs. And what this piece of code does is says if if the fire button is being pressed, well, we don't need that because we know we've already hit the switch. So with this, the trigger is this. Then take the next state of the door. If the next state is not already 
door zero because we've only got one door on this screen and it's the first door so this is zero switch zero so switch zero door zero I'll go into it. Otherwise, so it's going to take the this next state of the door uh, and compare it to the current state. So actually, what we need to do is we need to take um, we need to take this state, and if it is uh, if it's equal to zero, we jump to here. Otherwise, we return, uh, and then we need to check. Well, actually, no, if the door is next state. Oh, we just need to check state. That's all we need to do is check that one. So if the door state is at zero, then we exit. Uh, oh, actually, no, we do need to check both. So if, if the next state means that, if there is a next state, it means the door is actually opening as well. Um, so we do need to check both. Okay, so we will do exactly the same thing again here. So we check if the door is opening or if the door is is currently or if the door isn't already opening if it is sorry if the door is is that open or is it closed yeah that's open isn't it so if the door is opening or the door is or the door is not opening but it is currently closed then we do we jump to here at which point we put one in it into the next state. Just going to comment those out for a second because I'm not sure what this is doing here. Draw data animation position plus zero. Let's have a look at that. Might need to add a function into that, into the doors system for that. Oh, you got one of the other captains. Nice. Well done. Hey, well, look. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go and check this screen. So the door's there. Shoot the switch. It opens and stays open. Perfect. So there is a little bit more to this. Um, I believe I believe once you go through it, closes behind you. I need to look into that. Um, but actually, that would be on the other side anyway. So when we go through here, uh, that would just be the door here closes behind you. So even though it's the same door, uh, technically it's the same door, we would treat it like two separate doors. So this would be a door on this screen. So So that's fine. The only thing we need to do is stop it flashing here. Um, so let's John Harriman didn't work before. Oh, let me check that. Maybe I've maybe I've made a misspelling mistake somewhere. Actually, no, Joey. I'm I'm sure you had John Harriman on. I'm pretty sure you did. In fact, I'm yeah, you did have John Harriman on before. I'm sure I I'm sure I saw that guy appear before. How many have you got uh on that thing? So you've got whoops. Can't see the can't see the list, god damn it. Eleven out of twelve. Alright. I think it I am pretty sure it worked, but try it again. Maybe maybe it didn't for some reason, but um Uh, quick question: The particles where the laser hits the ground are these sprites, or is, or is it done differently? No, it's characters. It's done with a particle system. Uh, could I make a C compiler for the C sixty four? Probably not. I don't. I don't. Um, I don't really do much C. So I. I mean, I could, probably could write something, but I, there is already options out there to do that. So. Um, there's a few different uh, there's a few different compilers that will compile C into into six five zero two. 
Speaking of which as well, so next month's competition is going to be in Milfbok, uh, which is a, a kind of intermediary language, um, like a higher level language. I don't know what I call it intermediary. It's not really intermediary. Uh, it's a higher level language, kind of C-like, um, but it's specifically designed for uh, 6502. Well, it's it's designed for 8-bit platforms. Um, it was Garrett who didn't work. Okay, let me check Garrett. Maybe I spell it wrong. What's the what's the full name? Garrett Garrett. Have I missed one? Have I actually missed one? I think I've missed one. God damn it. No, I think you had that one as well. Yeah, that's it. I was pretty sure you had that one. Try it. It's definitely there. And it's definitely labelled in that way. It's a bit annoying that it came up full screen like that then, but uh but it's definitely there. Yeah. Uh, leave my dog on. Oh. Oh, I think I've misspelled it. Do it with one T. I think I misspelled it. That's a bit annoying. Yeah, it's two T's. God damn it. All right. Uh, what about your own programming language? No, I, I, I don't really... I don't really, I, I prefer to use assembly. I just uh, don't really want to use anything else. Uh, do, do you like pain? Why not try putting Java to C64? God, can you imagine how bloated that would be? It would be horrible. Uh, uh, yeah, so unfortunately, Rachel Garrett is, is misspelled. So I will, um, I will copy that now and add that in as a, a correct spelling as well. So it is there. So it's actually going to be in here. To, why is it not? What's going on here? So you can either do it now or um, on the next stream when I when I fix the uh, fix the spelling. She's uh, she's going to be in twice. She's going to be in is in as the correct spelling and as the incorrect spelling. That's really all I can do um, midstream. I need to make a system where I can remove certain uh, images and stuff. Uh, but that's, 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 that's mine, I think, really. So, Okay, cool. Um, let's go ahead and make that sprite stop flashing. So this works. That's fine, um, which means I don't need that. Uh, so there will be, though, for now, there will be two versions of Rachel Garrett SP. So if you want to put that in your list, um, there will be a, a second one. Do you think it's possible to port a basic OS like uh, Ubuntu server in terms of calling it basic compared to a C64? It's really not. It's way, way, way more complicated um, than than the C64 could could handle. Way, way too much for it. Um, so no, I don't. I don't think it could work. Uh, there are people making their own OSs. Uh, there's Geos as well. I think um, somebody was doing. Um, somebody recently was doing an OS as well. Um, but but really, no, I don't think you're going to get. You're not going to get flavors of Linux on, on a CC. Well, there just isn't enough memory at all. There isn't enough memory. There isn't enough speed. Um, and it just uh, no, it's just not going to work. Um, yeah, I mean, it, you you could kind of make it work, but it, it would be so ridiculously slow, and you'd need so many things to to do. So, can you imagine like trying to deal with file systems and stuff? And it would just be horrible. Um, it would be horrible. And and plus, I think you would need more than sixty four k. Yeah, sixty four k of memory to do it. You could probably do it with. Um, 
uh, with 16 meg exp- uh, 16 meg expansion ram probably but it's just no no points no point at all really all right um so in the update we do this get animation uh and this animates the the uh the switch i believe as a switch frame animation one two uh which i'm guessing is just color i don't think that's doing much much else get animation index ah oh, yeah see look it's just doing these things here so what we can do here is we can just do a check um, around this so we can say load door state and if it's not equal then we don't do the color color flash um, or then uh, we just actually we jump to because if the door is on one then we can just jump straight to here and that will set the color to white because the color needs to go white so so this is this is nice and neat if door is open equals one uh, then jump straight to set color white okay that's nice it works out nice and neatly for us there are most games on c64 done in char mode yeah i'd say i'd say the majority are definitely um definitely uh there, i mean there's games that use bitmap mode there's games uh that use various kind of versions of the the character mode i mean this is a high-res character mode which is probably less common on the c64 games tend to use the multicolored mode um oh that's that's done the wrong color hasn't it okay did that change to two? Maybe it's changed to two instead of to one. All right. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just switch this round a little bit. So we'll change that to this. Uh, let's just get rid of that comment, actually. God, there we go. Let's put. Uh... Oh, actually, that damn it! That would have been right if I'd have just done this. I wasn't loading the Y index for the for the switch, so it wasn't saying properly. Okay, that should be fine now. <laughs> there's a typo in the comment open yeah all right i'm not going to award points for typos in comments though oh god sake i cannot I, you know i'm starting to hate this keyboard now my quest continues for for more um for more keyboards that are like the mega 65 keyboard but thank you anyway. Thank you for the uh, for the typo notice. Uh, I mean, to answer these questions, you could port anything to the C64 if you're determined enough and you don't mind poor performance or upgrading your C64 with hardware. You can port anything, right? There's nothing stopping you from doing it. It's just your frame rates will be low. Your 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 I/O speeds will be low. It's just everything's just going to be um, slower and crapper. For me, I wouldn't put any kind of en desktop environment, uh, graphical environment to the CC world because I don't see the point. It's not really meant for that kind of thing. If you want to do that, get get a PC, or if you want a retro experience, get an Amiga. Um, but I mean, technically, you could run, uh, you could run Doom on a, on a C sixty four. It just would run at a very terrible speed. That's all. So, uh, but there's nothing stopping you from doing it. Um, it wouldn't look great, and it wouldn't run at a, a, a decent speed. In fact, it would be bloody awful. But you could do it. There's, there's definitely, it's definitely possible.
it's not enough side quests to manipulate them and convert to char so that's the main reason yes uh yeah so char mode is usually used because it's um because it's it's much better on memory and cycles so in, in both cases it's it's kind of win-win um so the particles in this are all all the particles you see all, all um the bullets the the de the decals the uh the explosion when when you hit things uh the laser as it kind of moves along it's all done with characters and it's just it's just cycling through them um so it tries not to use more than 16 characters i think and if it does use more than 16 it starts flickering between two very quickly so uh geos yeah i mean geos does exist but again i mean i i really don't see the point in in a in an os on on the c64 i mean what are you going to do with the os what what it doesn't make any sense to me the worst case i can think of is you might want to use or you may have wanted to use your c64 to do um text editing and then play a game but in that case that's what cartridges were about right that's you just switch a cartridge over it doesn't need to have I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. I don't. I don't think their C sixty four works well for that sort of thing. C one two eight slightly better. Um, Amiga even better still. Mega sixty five works really well with it though because it's fast enough. It's got fast enough. It's got good disk access. Lots of high memory as well. So there you go. Finally got the uh, the, the the captain's one down. Apologies for that. I do try and check as I go along, but that was an easy one for me to miss, I guess. Um, da, da, da. Uh, but yeah, plus not only that, I'm I'm not really interested in writing applications for the C sixty four. I'd rather be writing games. Games is where it's at, so Okay, so the, the other thing we need to do is make sure that the switch is clear when we move screens. Um, because at the moment they're not doing, which means if I jump up here, so it's not doing anything because the switch is... Let's see, what is it doing there? Oh, causing glitches, I believe. You see the glitches? Okay, let's. Okay, so we're getting glitches in the laser. I'm not seeing glitches in this though, but I swear oh, there were some before. Okay, definitely glitches in the laser, and I, I I think they only happened when I went into this screen. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna load again. Um, doing that laser with charge requires lots of charge with line segments. No, so it's so what happens? In fact, I can show you in the uh, show you in the debugger. So what happens is is there are there are sixteen characters reserved. For particles i think i believe it's six it might be eight i can't remember um and then what happens is that at the beginning of each frame they get cleared so you've got 16 space em 16 empty characters and then it goes through the particle list every time it tries to draw a particle it looks uh it, it calculates where that should be on screen so it takes a pixel coordinate turns it into a character coordinate then it looks at the the screen location of that character coordinate and says okay is there a blank space there or is there a is there a particle character there if there's a particle character there then it just adds a pixel to that already existing particle character if there's a blank space there then it puts a particle character there and then draws a pixel to it once 16 of these particle characters have been used up it doesn't draw any more it stops drawing any any more extra particle characters but it will still try and draw more pixels if it can on existing particle characters so it's got um 
it's got a bit of kind of funky logic to it, but the upshot is that it's basically just drawing new characters in different places on the screen, depending on the particles. So let me try loading that in. It's the bit long, there we go. Okay, why is that? Oh, source bin, there we go. So if I go into the right mode, which I can never get the first time. Uh, this mode and start the game. So you'll see these see these circles here. So it's eight actually, it's not 16, it's just using eight. So you can see the particles here, they're being drawn into this position. So if I if I move all these out of the way. So as these particles are being drawn, they're being drawn into characters as we move around. Um, and then when things explode, uh, which they should do if I set the joysticks to be both joysticks. Okay. So you'll see more particles happen here. So way more particles appeared all of a sudden, and it's the same if I move over here and blow these up, you see more particles appear. And all that's doing is just working out where it should put the particles on the screen. Uh, and it's also got some logic in it where if it, if there are more particles than it can handle in one frame, then it will draw one half in one frame, the other half in the next frame. So it will alternate very quickly. So you'll see a bit of a flicker in the particles um, when lots of stuff is going on. So you can probably just about make out that these are flashing. It's probably more obvious on stream, actually, because of the, the desyncing issue. Um, but you can kind of see that the, the the particles flash, and that's because they're alternating on and off. So on one, one frame, a particle may be on here, and on another frame, a particle may be on somewhere else on the screen. Uh, but on a real real machine at runtime, you will barely even see that flicker at all. It will They'll stay fairly static, so... Anyway, and you can see how the laser works here. So you can see the laser is just built up of uh, sprites. Uh, and again, when it hits the edge, it's just more particles being drawn. So, But the, the end result is pretty pretty decent. I think it looks nice. Right, let's get some more vodka on the go. Start thinking about... Oh, we're going to do a, a test on this laser, laser glitch, because there was a bit of a laser glitch. I'm not sure what was going on there, but we'll take a look at it. I've uh, got about another hour left, so. Yeah, the laser looks really nice. I'm quite pleased with it, actually. It worked, it worked out quite well. And the, the cool thing with the laser is we only had to draw a very small segment of it. So we had to draw, what, 20, 20 pixels, that's it. Um, no, 21 pixels, the height of a sprite, basically. So it's just one sprite. We draw we draw a line in one sprite, and then we just tile that sprite all the way down the screen. So, yeah, no problem, Kiss. Yeah, so the particles are just using a simple kind of um, velocity and gravity routine. So it's a very, very basic physics routine. Um, okay, so what I wanted to check first, oh, I can't go in this screen without triggering the switch. So I'm going to trigger the switch. Well, oh, there is a bit of a glitch in the laser then, actually. I don't know what triggers it, but there is definitely some glitching going on. It's probably due to the uh, the multiplexer timings but we can take a look at that later i think it's kind of fine so we're just looking for this laser going all glitchy because we've been in the other screen doesn't seem to be let's move up here try shooting the switch again yeah so you see on this screen when when there's a lot of particles going on from the laser the exhaust particles from the ship kind of flash a lot more uh, 
kind of assumed all child sprites are pre-cooked and you, you can just redraw them down. Yeah, this is this is being redrawn. So actually, just to show you again, if you see in the uh, in here, if we go and find that sprite in memory. Put it on the right page, maybe. Oh, this will do. I think we'll see the sprite here. So if we just scroll down to, I think it's no, not this area. Where the hell is it? I forgot where I put all the sprites and stuff now. No, can't remember where I put the sprites. All right. But yeah, that 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 single sprite is just drawing every frame. Oh, it's probably in here, and I've got because I've got the uh, I've got the Vic tuned to that area, so you're not gonna you're not gonna see the sprites in the memory, unfortunately. But yeah, this this sprite here is just a single sprite. It's just being redrawn. It's just drawing a line through it every frame. Um, obviously, the multiplex is doing some crazy stuff here as well. But uh, yeah, anyway. But yeah, you can you can draw dynamically into things if if you want to. Uh, obviously, it is slow, so you have to be clever about how you do it. Um, so in our case, this laser, rather than draw the entire line, it made sense to just draw a small section of it and use it as a sprite, and then just copy that sprite down the screen. So we just have multiple sprites. Okay, so coming in here and then going back in. Yeah, there is there is a bit of a glitch. There is a tiny glitch as it comes over here. Watch, watch behind the ship. I'm not sure why it's doing that, but it's almost certainly going to be multiplexer issues. Um, okay, yeah. Okay, so we probably need to have a go at fixing that. So let's let's have a go at replicating that without flicking the switch. I want to get this into a fast replication mode. So I want to be able to replicate this as quickly as possible so we can make changes and then see if it, if it affects it. So I've still got Rachel Gow on screen. I really need to organize these backgrounds so that the people are on the right side. So literally on the right side. So you don't, you know, they don't get obscured by me okay so yeah it's doing it again so i'm going to stay here we get double segments over here sometimes and double segments over here yeah brief flicker of it there but it's definitely happening and a little bit over here as well okay that's fine let's let's go and have a look at the more because we did do some fixes that fixed the multiplexer and definitely improved it uh, but we'd also I'd also messed around with some values uh, and some padding values in the multiplexer, which have probably kind of messed things up a little bit. So uh, increasing this number reduces the number of raster splits. Okay, let's try that and let's try let's try both on four for now. See see what happens. Will they update the pick and mix GitHub? So I need to finish pick and mix. Uh, so the game, is, the game is complete. Uh, code like ninety nine percent complete. I need to finish off a few, um, a few minor bits of polish and stuff for it. The reason I haven't updated the the pick and mix GitHub uh, for the past couple of months is because the game is almost complete, and I don't want CSDB morons to kind of upload it and you know claim claim response you know claim is theirs or whatever they do but I, I i don't want them to put the full game on there until we've re actually released it so i've been uh just holding back on that but the code that's already there is is really almost complete anyway there's really not a lot missing uh missing from it but i will eventually update it with the latest code soon as soon as i release the game it will will go there Okay, that seems to have resolved that issue. Uh no, not quite. There's still still a frame where it's off a little bit. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, thank you for the follow, inverted gold. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. 
hope you're having a great Thursday. I play the current get on version on Pair Metal and it played very well. Cool. I, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, it's um it's it's very, very close. It's um the version that's there is has just got a couple of kind of levels and it's not really uh ordered or anything. Uh send me two bitcoins. <laughs> You send me two bitcoins, you can have every piece of code on my computer. <sighs> two bitcoins. Actually, what are they worth now? They've gone down over there. So it's still worth about 80 grand, though. So I wouldn't say no to 80 grand. Even Creatures 3, yeah. You can have every piece of code I've written for Creatures 3. In fact, I'll give you every piece of code on my computer that's related to Creatures 3 for 20 pounds that's 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 how how generous i'm feeling yeah it's a level four and then a go yeah exactly so it's just a couple of screens on there and then and then it quits but all the levels are done now i think there's 32 or 40 levels i can't remember it's right about that i think it's 32 actually uh uh that red laser could you start the laser at the top of the globe so it looks more like the beam moves on the globe surface i mean it looks like the line just sticks to the middle yeah but that's how it is on the original game so um this is all this is all based on the original game remember so i'm not making any changes um that don't already exist in the in the original game so i believe that's exactly how it works on the original game let me just confirm that yeah, actually, it's got a little bit of a movement. Not much, but it does move a little bit. Uh, hmm, okay. Oh, see, now you've mentioned that. Now I want to do, now I want to make that that happen. Problem is, that's a lot trickier to do. That is a lot trickier to do. Um... Because the other problem as well is we've just done all of these positions, all of the particle positions and everything have been done. So that, yeah. I, I might... I might revisit that at some point. The problem is, is we did all those hard. Remember the when I was going through the uh, the debug and I was doing individual particles on every single spot. That would all need changing. Even though all we'd be doing is moving up a couple of pixels, it would need changing. So um, I kind of want to. Yeah, it was incredibly dull. Yeah, um, I kind of want to do that but i i'm worried about doing that right now so um so steve Rowland wants to do more games oh you mean john john Rowland does i don't know if steve wants to do more games although i think steve has been saying for a while he's wanted to do some stuff i'm i'm pretty sure if john does something he'll he'll steve will get involved anyway so Uh, yeah, John Merlin, yeah. I'm just trying to think if there's a sneaky way I can make that work. There isn't really, unfortunately. Oh. Oh. Ah, crap, no, because it's still... The problem is, and the problem is, is where it is, so the, it just needs to move a little bit around here. But the problem is, if you do that, then you have to change the position of the particles. Um, uh, that's where it gets that's where it gets really iffy. Uh, no, I'm I'm going to leave it for now. I I'll, I'll probably revisit it at a later date. But um, for now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. But you're right, Steps. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, I thought it was like that on the original. I honestly did. If I'd have, if I'd have known that, I would have made the change early on. 
because it wouldn't have been a huge change for us to make either so um because we're already we're already set in the uh position of all of these all it would just be doing is is setting the initial one here as well um and setting a y y offset as well so it wouldn't be a huge change in terms of getting it to stick here but it would mean going through all of these data again and working out which of these need to change so remember there's there's three things we need to do here you need to decide where the particles are going to appear um which would be kind of the same roughly in the middle but on the outskirts it would look completely wrong uh then we have to decide how many segments of laser to draw and then we have to decide on the last segment does it need moving back a little bit so remember how we move some of them back to to make it flush with the surface um that in itself is a is a whole stream so i'll i'll do i probably will do it at some point uh, but i'm not going to do it I'm not going to do it today uh, okay, so we still got multiplexer issues. Let's take a look at those. So I'm going to put that padding down a bit, and I'm going to increase this padding. I'm going to increase it quite high and see what happens. I, I'm just trying to. I can never remember what these two padding values do um, because I very rarely kind of mess with these settings. And I wrote this code three years ago, the multiplexer code. <laughs> Ooh, why am I quite tired? All right. Yeah, so it's actually glitching more now. I think. Would that issue with the multiplexer get worse with the music included? No, the music is still in there um but what i've what so you see this flicker at the bottom here this is the music finishing these dots at the bottom um in terms of percentage how far you in process this game uh it's not that far really maybe 30 percent, something like that yeah it's quite low 20 percent. yeah 20 20 to 30 percent, something like that um The thing is, is the the actual uh, the difficult stuff has kind of been done. Um, really, it's just kind of individually coded in each screen now. So, um, so it should should ramp up fairly soon once we get the uh, the glitches figured out. There is still a glitch on this screen. Yeah, look, there it is. So why would it be glitching? Let's have a think. Okay. What's interesting is it's it's drawing a sprite here at this position, which makes me think it's to do with the mace. Like it's drawing it in the mace's position. So like if I No, it's fine there. No, it's not actually. Look, it's Yeah, it just glitches when it gets over there for some reason. Okay, let's play around with the values again. Let's try lowering this down. Oops. I like this song, it's good. Thomas Holloway, Enterprise D. Is that from TV, movie? What, what's it from? I think I've only included the movies and the uh, the the official TV series. So that I've not included uh, anything that's uh, a novel or an alternate timeline or something like that. So. No, it's still glitching. It's still glitching. In fact, it's glitching more with that number. Or is it? No. Still, kind of want to redo the. Uh, want to redo the. Um... Uh, 
Uh, yeah, if it's an alternate timeline, I've not I've not put them in. I've ignored those. So the glitch is over here. Watch when the laser reaches this uh, the right hand side near the door. You see, it just kind of flickers on and off in the wrong places. So I want to just see if it is just due to the the number that have been displayed on a line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the the player and I'm just going to turn the mace off because we've got that on from the beginning. So uh, whoops. So I want to see what happens if we just have less going on on the screen. It is, yeah, I mean, it is kind of hard to spot a full stop, to be honest. But, um, yeah, let's make the screen a little bit bigger so maybe you can see it. Wow, Jesus, that's bright. So I've turned the mace off now, so I'm hoping I don't see it now. Um, it, oh, no, see, it's still glitching. This is making me think it's more to do with um, raster timings or something. Um Let's check if it's tight. Right, so I've turned the mace off and it's still glitching. You can see it kind of glitching all over the show here. So let's try turning the music off. I mean, you, you can't hear the music, but it is running the music here. So let's just turn that off and see if it's a timing thing. So if it's not glitching now, then we know it's to do with timings. And that could just be us juggling some things around as well. So. I definitely had less problems with the laser when, when the music was, was off last time. No, there's definitely some glitches in it. Yeah, see, there's a big glitch then. Yeah, still glitching. It's a different kind of glitch though now. Yeah, it's a different kind of glitch. It's kind of moving over here instead. Okay, let's uh, let's put the music back on. Let's take a look at the the timings on this. So let's uh, turn the debug on. Uh, and I think that should show us uh, split timings as well. So So we can see there's lots of shit going on here as well, uh, which is probably to do with the particles. This is why I, I moved some stuff around because uh, we were getting particle glitches. But yeah, look at that. There is a lot. It's a lot of busy stuff going on in here, uh, which means it could very easily be missing uh, missing the sprites updates for some reason. But yeah, look, it's it's really really filling that that screen up very quickly there. So first of all, let's uh, let's go through one at a time and figure out what these are. So we've got a multiplexer sort routine, uh, which I think is the yellow one here, which looks massive. I don't know why it's so big. Maybe I've got too many sprites. Uh, max multiplex sprites. Right, C max multiplex sprites. So let's find out. Shouldn't be that big though. I mean, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be terrible. Uh, Title screen, where is it? Variables, here we go, constants. Max multiplex sprites is set to 20. So let's try moving it to 16. Let's see if that yellow area shrinks a little bit. <laughs> is that not loading? Oh, because I need to close that one. So, so this yellow area is huge, and I don't like how big that is. That's way too big. Um, uh, both those multiplex labels are pointed out too. Uh, what, what do you mean? Oh, in in. Oh, they're not. Then they're they're values. They're not addresses. They're they're values that are to be used. They're like um, padding values.
Okay, so I think we need to do some optimization because there's a lot of stuff going on here. This sort routine is massive. I don't know why it's so bad. Uh, but actually, that didn't look like it was glitching anymore. thing is i can't remember what all of these colors mean or what they're doing but but look at that sort routine if this is just the sort routine it's, it's huge and i'm not pleased with that so um well, let's go and take a look yeah so we're setting the border to color seven here so this is a little macro that just sets the border when the debug is turned on uh so we don't have to you know, add and add and remove them all the time uh multiplexer sort okay so let's take a look at the multiplexer yeah, it wasn't glitching, was it? So, uh, all I've done is re reduce the number of um, uh, the number of uh, number of sprites in the multiplexer to sixteen, which is a bit low. I really would like to have twenty at least. Um, but we do have a lot of stuff going on some of these screens, so so this is the swiv adapted saw. I might have to change this into more like a uh, not bucket sort, but like a, a uh, I don't see. I don't know. Step by step sort might be. Yeah, I might have to have a think about how this works, but it might not even be this routine though, uh, because this is, oh, it does work out the padding as well though here. Uh, and then, yeah. So this is actually, this works out all the uh, all the um, raster positions and stuff, and then it comes to here. So if I put that in here, or if I just put like a uh, border eight here like that, there we go. So now this is only going to show us because at the moment I think that's showing more than more than we bargained for here. So just going to get it to show only the um, only the sort routine. Take a look at that. We'll work our way through through this. Okay, yeah, so the sort routine isn't that bad, actually. Um, then there's something else, and then the music routine, and then this bit here. Okay, so let's let's work out what things are. Because on this screen, it goes absolutely mental. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of shit going on on this screen. And that's because we've got a door that we update. And we've also got a switch that we update. Um, but that shouldn't be all of this. That shouldn't take all of this extra code. Let's compare a screen with nothing going on. Right, the only thing that's happening on this screen is these two sprites are animating. Uh, let's add some particles into the mix. Yeah, see, it really didn't add a lot. Moving the ship around adds a little bit. But we've still got quite a lot of space. But then this screen is just crazy. There's so much going on on this screen. It's probably this laser. Let's just let's just slow that laser down. Well, let's turn the laser off. See what happens. Then maybe we need to optimize the laser a little bit. Uh, screen. There we go. Let's just turn the laser update off. Yeah. Could just be the position of the laser update as well. It could be that I need to move the laser update to happen earlier. We've also got this passable area update as well, which is quite complicated. So there's actually this is quite a complex screen in terms of what's going on on it. Um, it is going to be the line drawing it, but I've I've tried to make the the line go uh, to every yeah. That's that's what I might do if if this is if this doesn't work out. I might stagger the um, the switch and door updates so they happen alternately. Um, Yeah, look at that. Look at the difference. It's the laser. It's it's the laser. One hundred percent. It's the laser. So while there is a little bit of a, a kind of movement in, elsewhere, it's the laser itself. But that means that the laser update, because it's happening last, it's happening down here. So the reason it's glitching is not because it's it's. I mean, it is taking a lot of time, but the reason it's glitching is because it's the very last thing that we update. So if I instead move that to here do it before everything else that should be better it 
should glitch a lot less. Plus, with the, the multiplexer turned down to 16 instead of 20, which I think it would probably be all right on 16. If I need more, I can add more. Again, I might make the multiplexer dynamic so I can change it on screen by screen because that will allow me to kind of free things up. Same with the particles as well. I can say, oh, no, on this screen, I, I only want to use 30 particles, as 32 particles as a cap instead of 128. Um, or I, I want to use only eight sprites on this screen or no multiplexer on this screen. So Yeah, that's not glitching though. Just keep an eye on that for a second. I think that's fine there. I mean, you can see it is using an awful lot of the of the screen time to do this. Um, so this is going to be really fun because there's a there's a, a screen later on that's got four lasers on it. Now the lasers are all kind of synced, so they you would only actually have to draw two lines, um, and one line is basically a mirror of the other one. So there's probably a way to draw one and then mirror it at the same time. So it's probably not as bad as it seems. Um, and we can probably reduce it down to two lasers instead of four. Um, but it's going to be tricky. But yeah, there's no glitches here at all now. So that's good. Right, I'm going to get rid of all the flashing because it's kind of driving me mad. So apologies if you are um, <laughs> currently having an epileptic fit because of that. I should probably put an epilepsy warning on my fucking streams, to be honest. The, the, the amount that I'm constantly flashing boards and stuff. Okay, so this is with the border flashing turned off. and Hopefully now it feels nice and smooth. Um, I'm just going to check that it's uh, not glitching. If it's not glitching, we'll go ahead and turn the mace back on. Uh, I want to keep that mace on all the time because it does kind of give me... Um, just reorder the function calls to fix it. Yeah, it's because what's happening is is we've got a lot of stuff. So a lot of the stuff starts down here. So the sprite sort actually starts round about here on the screen. Um, you know, the, the last kind of 20% of the, the screen. Um, and then loads of stuff happens, like particle updates. And a lot of stuff happens before we get to the, the top of the screen. Um, but there is still some stuff like screen-specific stuff, like lasers that still happen during screen render time. So we just have to make sure that we render those, that we do those things in the in the perfect order so as not to cause problems. So if something does have a graphical component to it, it's probably best being done as early as possible. Uh, so for instance, the switch, no need to do the switch anywhere because um, there's no graphical update for the switch other than to stop it animating, which doesn't really matter. Um, same with the door, really. The door can kind of glitch. It doesn't really matter that much because all you're going to see is maybe for one frame, um, one of the, the tiles stretch a little bit, so it's not going to look too bad. Um, but things like this, for instance, have to be kind of rendered um, when you're when you're preferably not in that sprite area here. Um, otherwise, it causes issues. The other way, of course, to do this is to, um, to have a shadow sprite RAM uh, instead uh, and move that. Am I going to flash? Oh, I thought I was flashing the laser. No, I'm not, am I? That, that should be flashing. Let's turn that back on. It was originally flashing. Um, yeah, another another reason way to do this would be to have a sh uh, if it does start becoming a massive problem everywhere. Um, I believe it's that. I believe it's those lines there. I'll try it now. If it does start becoming a massive problem, then what I will do is I will move some of the sprite data into into a shadow area and when the um when you update the sprites you update the shadow area and then that gets pushed um that gets sorted and pushed and although that's kind of what's happening uh but they're being displayed no that's that's not right is it what is oh yeah no it would have to alternate between two sets of data for the sprites the current set and the next frame so you'd be double buffering the sprite data basically so yeah, you could could definitely do it, but I think we're we're all right at the moment. 
Well, it's flashy, but it's the wrong colors. All right. Uh, I just assumed that code was was fine. Um, all right. Load laser color or it with three. So if it's two, it becomes one. If it's one, it becomes two. Store it in laser color. Load laser color. Store laser color. Okay. Best practice ten two nine one reorder function calls. Yeah. <laughs> It's amazing how often that works on the C64. The trick is being able to spot. It's not always the easiest thing to, to realize what's going on. You have to really kind of think about what the renderer is trying to do, uh, what the Vic is trying to do as it moves down the screen. Uh, what what clued me up to it was the fact that we were seeing sprites appear in, in places where they were never actually being set. So it felt like that you were getting half of the data, but not the full data. Okay, it's kind of almost there. It's just a bit quick. It needs to be slowed down. Um, it's giving like a weird, it looks like a weird trail effect as it moves across. It either needs to slow down or it needs to be read more often. I think it needs to slow down. Though. I think that's the, the problem here. So, Okay, so this is happening every frame. So let's just do our lovely trick of taking whatever the timer is. There. I can't remember what we called it now. Time of frame timer. There we go. Oh my god, what is going on with my typing tonight? It's time for. <laughs> Wrong keyboard type. There we go. So we're going to make this only happen once every four frames, and this should hopefully slow the the, uh, the flashing down. It should look a bit bit more kind of a bit of look all right. So yeah, there we go. That's better. Cool. I still think it should be red more often than it should be white. Like it's let's take a quick look at the. The original laser. Okay, so oh, it just flashes really slowly. Okay, well, that's easy enough to do. It's probably way too slow now, but. Yeah, it's your brain playing tricks on you. That I was, I was looking at that and I was thinking, what is going on there? And it's, I think it's because of the persistence of persistence of vision with white and red, because they have different different persistence times. Those colors, you get one still appearing to be there while the other one is is being drawn. Whereas when it's the same color, your brain automatically kind of removes the other one if you like. It knows there's a motion going on. But what's happening is an optical illusion. So as it moves and changes color, your brain says, oh, the red one's still there, but now there's another one. Now there's a white one here. It's different. It's, and so your brain sees too. Uh, and because of the persistence, you, it doesn't disappear quick enough uh, from your vision. It's, it's kind of funny. I like it. Crazy optical illusions. I like the opti like there's a really good optical illusion with uh, black and white pictures, where if you look at... Um, What's it now? You look at you look at an inverted color version of a picture, and you focus. Uh, you you look at that picture for ages, and then you switch to a black and white version of the picture, but with a dot in the middle. If you focus on the dot, the uh, the the picture turns full color, and it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy, and it's 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 your brain doing the persistence of vision thing. Because you stimulate the so like if a, if a picture is uh, for instance if a picture is like I, I can't remember what the actual colors are but it's something to do with negative colors so if you see if you look at a picture that's like bright red then the bright red part of your eye gets stimulated a lot which means when you look at a picture 
that uh, doesn't have red in it, your brain will automatically think, oh, there's still some red in there because it's still being stimulated. So your brain will automatically raise the other colors up to make it seem like those colors are active. So you get uh, you get like negative pictures. It's quite clever how it works, but yeah, it's really cool. All right, let's see if this works. But yeah, it's, a, it's, it's not quite the same effect, but it's another persistence of vision effect with colors having different um, persistence times. The whole science to it with um with with uh gaming monitors and response times and stuff so uh oh raid that's too slow now need to speed it up all right thank you very much for the raid jolly jones hey jolly welcome along again good to see you again how's things how's things over in Jollyland? Uh, what have you been playing? Oh, you've been playing Specky. Yes, yeah, somebody said uh, somebody said you were playing Spectrum tonight. Interesting. What what in particular have you been playing? Anything? Anything kind of really jump out at you, or you just been just been plowing through them all and giggling at how how kind of how lacking they are graphically. Hey, Zypho, Jez Dukes, You're welcome. And uh, night night shift as well. I don't I don't mind Specky. I I my first kind of real home can be it was a Spectrum, so I, I can't I can't diss them too much. But um, I just I just prefer my I just prefer my Commodore to be honest. We need to defend. We do need to defend, don't we? I don't know how to do that though. So do we just? Oh, I'll figure something out. I'll figure something out. But yeah, welcome along. Thank you very much for the raid, Jolly Jones. Thank you uh, to everybody that's joined Jolly um, in the raid. I'm Shannon 50 k I do C64 coding. Um, currently just on one night a week on, on the Thursdays. Saturdays and Tuesdays are now Mega 65 uh, coding, which is kind of almost Commodore. Um, very good. Uh, but to be fair, Target Renegade is a lot better on the Spectrum. Yes, I must admit, I play Target Renegade on Spectrum, and it is very good on the Spectrum, so... I, I can't I can't complain. Um I think it was uh was it Cobra as well, I think I played on the spectrum was pretty good, so uh, but yeah, hope you hope you had a good raid anyway, and and welcome along. I think Nightmare as well was one I played on the spectrum, uh and I didn't get along with the C sixty four version. Uh, it wasn't quite as good. I think when a game is is isometric, I think the Spectrum does it really, really well. Um, uh, and I think games that have got a lot of blitting, a lot of stuff that's been drawn to the screen, um, I think they they do they do pretty well. Um, Chase HQ, work. yeah, some of the some of the racing games are very good on the Spectrum actually. But then again, <sighs> racing games on the CC for all were very hit and miss. There were some amazing games. But there were so many bad races on the on the um uh, on the on the C sixty four. But games like Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge were amazing, really, really good on the C sixty four. I mean you had split split screen two player racing and it was fast and it was smooth and it was it was really good. <laughs> Cisco Heat, yeah, Cisco Heat is terrible. Cisco Heat is probably the worst game ever made. Um I forgot what I was doing now. What was I doing? Uh, oh, the laser. I was going to slow it down a little bit, wasn't I? Uh, okay, let's, let's uh, speed it up, sorry. Yeah, Boogie Boy was good as well. Boogie Boy was very good. Um, oh, yeah, I saw that new race game as well. It does look pretty decent. I mean that's kind of kind of the problem is 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 the red doesn't quite look look right I think it's uh and I know spectrum fans will call it a brown but it's it's just not quite bright enough uh and so it looks kind of a bit dull when it when it turns on um also I think on the original game there's a little bit of a glow on it and though I mean we obviously can't do the glow so um 
Okay, that, that'll that have to do for now. We'll, we can come back to that. I don't want to spend too long on that. Let's um, let's just turn the mace on. I just want to make sure if the mace is on that it doesn't cause any glitches in the multiplexer. Um, ooh, did I start it then? Oh, God damn, it's so bright, that screen. It's ridiculous. Um, Is Becky space over the full checkable floor? Um, yeah, do you know what? I don't know why. I don't know why they didn't because you have um, uh, you have like games like Cosmic Causeway and stuff, which did an amazing job of that kind of checkerboard floor. Uh, and then you just have games that just kind of die phoned it in. I think. Yeah, the Commodore just the Commodore just just had more colors and stuff. So it just when a game needed to be colorful, it could be very colorful. And the thing is, that I know Spectrum owners will say, "Oh, it's just all browns," but it's not really. Look at Creatures and Mayhem and Turrican and games like that. They're not brown. They're they're like super super colorful. Um, okay, I think that's that's working fine then. So let's let's open the door. Okay, so, and this isn't glitching either anymore. Okay, so I think it's just down to timings on each screen. We're just going to have to be careful as we go through. So uh, I'll tell you what I am going to do. I'm going to, we've got about 20 minutes left, so I'm going to mess around with this sub screen and get the, get the stars working a little bit better. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up the stars on this screen a little bit. Um... Yeah, I'm just going to speed them up, I think. I think that's what I'm going to do. All right. So let's do that. So, oh, just, damn it. I didn't see what screen number it was. I didn't want to see what screen number that was. Jesus Christ. That's so bright, that screen. I must admit, the, the, the C64 palette is definitely more muted than the... Than the uh, the, the spectrum one the spectrum one is just like a neon palette it's crazy um but it is it's a very very well balanced palette that the thing that makes the c64 palette so good is that you it's so well designed with the luma levels that you can make some pretty amazing kind of graphics with with just 16 colors it's like the perfect 16 colors um the problem is is because it had red orange and brown which blended very nicely together. And because it had the three greys that blended very nicely together, it was very easy for people to just fall into the trap of making levels with those colours. Um, but the Commodore, is, if, it's, if it's done right, it can be absolutely amazing. Uh, okay, this is screen number 01. All right, so screen 01. It's this one here. Okay, maximum stars, five. Okay, and then using that many pieces of the screen 10 okay um, let's fill in the screen with them here um did we have some offsets for this or is it using random i think it's using random numbers is it yeah it's using random here okay clear the stars yep this is going through presets. So yeah, this is doing 10 stars at a time. We're doing 10 stars at a time here. So let, let's have a go, actually. Let's put a... Let's put a, a char count here. Uh, let's try changing that to 16 and see what happens. Um, Actually, let's make that, it, doesn't, it shouldn't be like that, it should be like this. Oops. Oh, jeez, I really cannot type tonight. I don't know what is going on. That's because I started the stream by saying I'm awake and everything, everything feels good, so of course my brain has decided to prove me wrong. 
Uh, okay, so what we're going to do here is I'm just going to change everything to use a constant and I'll set the value higher to see if we can just have a slightly more random set of stars. Um, it might be that it's too much. Uh, it might start flickering and stuff. I don't know. Um, oh, damn. Oh, good night, Jolly. I missed that. Sorry. Uh, yeah, hope hope you sleep well. Thanks again for the raid. Hope you had a good night. Uh, I don't understand if I'm not wading into the colour zone on the 8-bit systems. I, th I think every every platform has its advantages. I think the thing with the Spectrum is it it because it only had the one bit kind of uh, the colour of... Uh, where was I going? Oh, yeah. Because it only had the one bit kind of graphics. Um, one bit per pixel. Oh, yeah. So that went completely wrong. Okay, so there's a reason I'm using ten and not not more. Um, it made up for it by having the very bright colors, right? It had all it had all the really bright colors, so things looked kind of kind of fun and exciting. If it had a, if it if it only had one bit color like it does, and it had muted palette as well, it would look awful. So, um, thank you, Macapple, for the follow. Appreciated. Cheers. So I think this will work if I just put that value back to back to zero A. But the problem is there that that's no longer um, setting the characters correctly. So I need to find out where the character is actually being drawn, which I think is in this location here. I have no idea why it's using E E. Ah, S mod plus one. Okay. Uh, okay. That's a bit annoying, but okay. Plot all stars. Char target. Uh, okay, so there is a char target that's been set. Oh, screen temp. Okay. Where is that value coming from? Oh, because it has to work out where the stars are. Oh, okay. So it needs to work out where those stars are. Because our character set changes on the fly, it needs to work out exactly where those characters are. So actually, I'm going to leave this as OA. I'm going to make sure this works. And that's one we'll probably revisit at some point. But I'm going to try and make it look as good as I can with, with the current setup. So let's make it work, and then we'll, we'll drop it out. It will change some speeds and stuff, so I really need to sort the brightness out on my screen. Or just change that intro to be black, white on black, rather than black on white. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's working there. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the original. Let's see if we can do some comparisons here. Um, bear in mind, I'm not going to be able to do this star field exactly the same, uh, but this star field is moving much quicker, and there seems to be a bigger disparity between the, the fast moving and the slow moving pieces. Um, there is going to be more repetition in ours because we're not using, um, we, we're just using 10 characters, we're just repeating 10 characters across the screen here. To, to perform the same same task. Uh, so we're using a little bit of a, a trick. However, we can make this look better by speeding things up. So let's have a go at doing that. Uh, let's close that down. Oh, so I'm opening all the wrong programs now. I can't even use my mouse properly anymore. So screen one, let's take a look. Okay, so here's where we clear. Here's where we plot. Here's where we clear the edges. So I'm not seeing anything that's a speed thing in here. Um, ah, there we go, speed. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, it looks like we're only using uh, low values to this. Add star speeds, yes. Uh, new series. Uh, oh, yes, indeed. There you go. 
<laughs> steps. See, I don't mind if you redeem and one once it's covered. So for those who haven't been on the channel before, we have these backgrounds. You can set the backgrounds uh, on my on my screen uh, every three minutes when that timer runs out in the top corner. Uh, it will say ready, and you can you can guess a background. Uh, there's currently four hundred and fifty eight backgrounds, um, and three hundred sixty one of them have been discovered. Uh, and some of the backgrounds belong to series. So in this case, there is a series. Uh, it doesn't tell you what the series topic is. You have to kind of guess what the topic is. Um, but it tells you how many are in that topic uh, and how many you've currently got. Catch up with a chat a little bit. It's basically my background. I was going to do this, but then my brain could cope. There are, um, I mean, I have hundreds of videos uh, now um, on this, but the the first couple I did, uh, not last year, the year before, um, have been proven really useful for people. So, I mean, if you can sit through a, if you can sit through a two to three hour video um, and maybe do two or three of those, then you can, you, you can learn enough to make a game. So um, on a Commodore 64 or similar machine as well. So check my youtube out my youtube is um actually i don't think it spams my youtube does it so let me type that in for you uh my channel is there on youtube it's got all the videos on it um there's loads and loads of stuff on there on on uh on coding for the c64 um there's also my patreon as well if you if you're really interested you can um you can check my patreon it's uh it's like one dollar i think to to join and you get a pdf of like 300 pay no 100 and I can't remember how many pages. So it's a lot of pages, like 200 pages or something, um, which is uh, basically a, a little, um, uh, almost like a write-up of the first six or seven streams that I did um, and basically talks you through the coding and how it works and how how, how to understand it and stuff. So, oh, there we go. Andy's, Andy's on a mission now. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Okay, so this is where the update happens. I'm not sure what the star counter is, and but star speed is there. Star counter. I'm not sure what that is at all. Oh, I guess this is this is ticking round. So when this ticks round, it will it will change. All right, okay. Interesting approach. I don't know why I've done it like that, but fair enough. Yeah. See, look there. Yeah. Add this value if the counter ticks around and do do that. Okay. So what we could do, we could just run this a few times. So if we, instead of doing this uh, just once, if we did this like three times, then everything will be three times faster. But now I don't I don't know how well this is going to work. I don't know if it's going to cause glitches. It very well could do. Um, Plus, uh, but let's try it because if this works, then what we can then do is we can change these values in the in the speed to kind of to compensate for that, and, and uh, hopefully it will work a little bit better. Or look a little bit better, should I say? There's probably a neater way of doing this, but I just want to see if it looks better first before I, I go ahead and try it a different way. The problem with with not doing it three times is that there's probably a little bit of a cleanup in the in the stars as yeah see that it's it's doing some some funky stuff as it moves but there is no other glitch like the sprites aren't glitching or anything are these glitching down here when i shoot these no okay so so the routine's probably okay it's just it's just not um it's not clearing up properly behind itself so Let's take another look. Uh, so, oh, we we're already doing three updates down here already. Ah, okay. So let's get rid of that. Let's get oh, hang on. Yeah, let's get rid of that. 
So let's get rid of this bit here. Now this bit I'm a bit bothered about, so I'm just going to get rid of that and I'm going to put this here. I have a funny feeling it needs to do that after every frame. So this is going to slow down some, this is going to slow down. Well, let's just see what happens. I think it needs to plot all stars every time. Oh yeah, so we've got a we've got like different gambling things. You've got to keep everybody happy. So I so I had a little little game at the bottom of the screen. So if people get bored, kind of watch the code or watch me just kind of struggle with the code, they can. Oh, in fact, it's completely stopped now. <laughs> uh, they can they can play the the game instead. And people seem to like it, which is which is good. Yeah, for some reason not having that. In there causes a problem. So it's like it has to do the plot. Let's move the zub out. I don't know why that has to to do that. That's really weird. Let's add three more of those. Right. Okay. So I'm just trying to. I'm just playing around. I think I might change the the star system here. Um, it's a very small kind of thing, but it, I, I do want it to look fairly close. So, ah, thank you, thank you, Smooth MJ. Plenty of videos on there. I'm I'm kind of slowing down on the on the stream videos. I'm going to start doing a a, a little bit. Um, so fast it looks like it stopped. Uh, I'm going to start doing more um, focused videos on C64 on a. Oh no, that stopped now. More focus videos on Mega Sixty Five. So I'm going to take the the stuff that we do um, on stream and kind of trim it down to get rid of all the kind of chit chat and just turn it into useful videos. So hopefully the Mega Sixty Five stuff will be a bit more appropriate. Um, okay, it seems like if I don't do the sub, then it, it fails. And I don't know why it's not moving faster. It should be moving really fast at this point. Yeah, I might have to. I might have to do some changes on this. People learn hex. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a bad idea, actually. I do. I, I'm. I'm constantly thinking of. Um, Constantly thinking of things to add to the stream. I do want to do that new gamble game, the uh, the, the golden balls or whatever it's, you know, the, the steal or uh, share or steal. I think that would work really well. Um, why is that not moving faster? This should be moving faster now, and it's not doing. It's bothering me. It doesn't seem to matter if I call it once or, I mean, I'm calling it six times here, but just call it once. It's one for next one for next stream, I think. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna end in a few minutes. Uh I'll go and find someone to raid in a minute. A bit a bit slow tonight, but uh we've got the switches working, that's the main thing. Uh fixed a glitch in the uh fixed a glitch in the multiplexer. Not in the multiplexer, sorry, in the uh in the laser. Yeah, see they're moving at the same speed. It doesn't matter if I call it once or, or many times. Oh, wait a minute. Is that because what's happening in Oh, that's in the init. Okay, so which has to cut. Okay, so this is just drawing it three times. And then this is what's actually Okay, so this needs to be three times. So let me do it here. Okay, so decrease I think this is going to be too slow now. That's what I honestly believe at this point. 
uh, but I need to try it anyway just to see. Plot all stars. Please tell me that's not using Y. It is using Y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a parameter here. Could do this in zero page, but I've started being quite lazy with these things. Yeah, so let's do that, see what happens. So hopefully that should double the speed. I think I need to change this routine. The problem is, is because of the way it draws the characters, it's never actually drawing the whole section. What it does is it deletes one pixel off the tail and draws one new pixel on the head. So kind of like snake, basically. You're only ever removing one from the back and putting one on the front. So if I move things too quickly, what will happen is it will move two ahead, but it will it will miss things when it deletes. So call update and clean up several times. Yeah, I, I mean, if it works, it works. I'm not going to. I'm not going to worry too much for this one screen, um, but I would maybe like to fix it properly so it, it's it does a proper kind of tail clean tail and head cleanup. Yeah, that looks all right. Flickering wise, it's not flickering. That does look a lot better actually. Still a bit of a pattern repeating pattern going on, but that's always going to be the case with this kind of system. Uh, we're just changing ten characters. I mean, the fact that it looks like that with just 10 characters is, is pretty impressive. So, but yeah, that looks better. Cool. Um, we'll go with that. All right. On that note, I am going to, so what we've we done tonight, we've got the glitch fix. We've got the laser, laser glitch fix. We've got the door working, the switch working for the door. Uh, uh, there's still a glitch when I change screens, but um and we've changed that to be a bit faster. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm happy with that. That's fine. All right, let's find someone to raid. So Saturday is going to be a big day. Uh, Saturday we've got... Um, so Duke's on. Let's raid Duke. Saturday we've got... Um, obviously, we're going to do Mega 65. It's going to be the last uh, showdown conversion stream. So um, that's going to be uh, kind of exciting. Hopefully, by the end of the stream, we'll have something that's that's almost ready to go. It just needs reskinning. Um, and we've also got the competition results, so we'll we'll find out um, who has won the the next. If you can see that there, the next Nexus Four FPGA board. You can't see it because of green screen. It's a green box, so it's got green on it anyway. Um, so it would be good, interesting to find out who's won that. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. Um, how do you do the Starfield? It is uh, no, not sprites. It's characters. It's Charles. There, there is a video in my YouTube that shows how to do this. Um, uh, it's called uh, Let's Make It Rain or something. Search for rain um, in my YouTube and you should find it. Um, and it shows how I did a, a rain effect and a snow effect, which is using a similar similar trick to this. But yeah, hopefully um, hopefully we'll see some good entries on, on Saturday. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing who wins it. I'm, I'm really intrigued as to um, the approach that people have taken and the values. Uh, people have come up with um but yeah it's it's uh, been a good stream thank you very much for joining I'll see you on saturday let's go and raid duke now say hi to duke and i shall see you all soon cheerio